Well, it's a new year and that means new year resolutions and for many that also means getting and staying in shape, which is especially important this year as studies show an increased risk of severe COVID in overweight individuals. And joining us now is Abby Mallory, a clinical dietitian from St. Luke's here to answer some questions about weight management going into 2022 and tips to stay on track. Abby, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, you know, I know a lot of people are interested in this, especially coming off of the holidays and all of those sweets and treats. So what are some obstacles that people might face when it comes to this and going into the new year? Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, I'm actually going to dodge it a little bit because I know that oftentimes weight is something that people focus on uh, coming on to the new year. And so as a dietitian, I really encourage folks to, uh, you know, f focus on healthy behavior and lifestyle changes. Um, and I would, and I would say to you all that weight is not, it does not define your health. And so in this new year, let's, let's focus on healthy behavior changes that are gonna increase our energy and boost our immunity and hopefully make us feel good. Okay, so speaking of, what are some of those tips to help you with your healthy, you know, goals? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I think the evidence is out there that, that you know, these short-term diets are sort of not working in the long term. So finding some, so starting with some small changes that you can make um, to help, you know, to help promote some healthy behavior changes. So, you know, thinking like, these changes that you're making are, are not just for these six weeks to, um, it's more thinking about this is what I'm gonna do sort of for the rest of my life, implementing these changes. So starting off small, you know, thinking like, okay, so if I've been cooking with butter, maybe it's time to switch to a healthier fat and try cooking with olive oil or canola oil. Um, or if, you know, if you feel like you're not having fruits and vegetables at your meals, you say, okay, every day this week, I am going to add a vegetable to dinner and just starting small and building on those changes. Baby steps. Um, what are some foods and drinks that people should maybe avoid? Yeah, a good question. You know, I'm a big fan of moderation and eating a variety of foods. Um, and so I, I try not to tell people that they can't have anything because sometimes that makes you want to have it more. If you wanted to pick like one thing, if you're like, okay, I need to cut something out this new year, I would encourage people to ditch soda and, and juice and stick with drinking water. You kind of just mentioned water and adding a vegetable a day. Um, are there some other good food options for meals and snacks that people should maybe help put into their daily diet? Yeah, I think when you're looking at your meal, your plate, you know, trying to fill it with half fruits and vegetables. So, you know, moving vegetables away from like, oh, it's just the side, but taking up more like the majority of your plate. And then choosing a, like a leaner protein. So thinking about beans and chicken and fish, uh, maybe replacing some of those more heavier red meats. Um, and then, you know, trying to choose those whole grains, like choosing brown rice over white rice, um, oatmeal is a great whole grain, um, things like that. A lot of good tips there. Thanks so much, Abby Mallory with St. Luke's. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah.